Hey everyone! In this video, we are going to talk about a certain physical property that determines a lot about the way something looks and feels. Let's start by looking at these two cubes here. One of them is made of silver and the other one is made of gold. Now, besides the two different colors, they look exactly the same physically. Uh, they look the same size, they are the same size and if you measure out their dimensions, it's going to be exactly the same. But here is a question for you. If you were to hold these, do you think both of them would weigh the same? Pause if you need some time to think about the answer. Let's see how you did. We are going to weigh these cubes now. Let's start with the silver first. And we see that this weighs 10.49 grams. So that's the unit. We'll just write that down. And let's do the gold. All right, you see that the gold weighs 19.3 grams. So although these cubes look exactly the same, the gold cube is nearly 9 grams heavier than the silver cube. Why is this happening? Why does the gold cube that's exactly the same size weigh more? Now to answer that question, we are going to take a closer look at these cubes. Let's imagine kind of zooming into these a little bit and looking at them from a molecular level. And now the difference is obvious. The molecules in the silver cube, these, these circles are what represent the molecules, they are more loosely packed than the gold. So the silver molecules, they are spaced farther apart from each other. There is more distance between them. Whereas the gold cubes, they are more tightly packed. The molecules are all closer together. What this means is that in the gold, in the gold cube, more material is packed in the same space. So this is kind of like when you pack your suitcase for a trip. Your suitcase is going to be exactly the same size. But depending on how much stuff you pack inside, it is either going to be light or it is going to weigh, it is going to be really, really heavy. This packing is what density is a measure of. Density tells us the mass of any substance that is present in one unit of volume of that substance. The unit of volume, this one unit can basically mean any one measure of any unit of volume. It can be one meter cube, it can be one gallon, it can be one liter, it can be one cubic feet, or whatever unit set that you are working with. It can also be one cubic centimeter of volume. So if we take these cubes of silver and gold over here, they let's assume they their volume is one cubic centimeter. We already weighed these. So let's try to see if we can figure out the densities for these. This cube of silver weighed 10.49 grams. And this is one centimeter cube. So the density of silver would be 10 grams per centimeter cube because 10.49 grams is how much of mass is present in one unit volume in one centimeter cube of silver. Now for the gold if we were to figure out the densities then this would be 19.3 grams per centimeter cube and that is the density of gold. That is simple, right? So this can be in any unit of measurement that you want. So how many, so density can be given in terms of how many kilograms are there in one meter cube of a substance, or it can be how many pounds are there in one cubic feet of a substance. So it can be anything. So these two uh, or these three rather are just commonly used units for density, but you can use any sets of units that you like. I'm not going to stop here. I'm just going to talk a little bit more about density and give a few more actual examples to drive the point right through. I'm going to use two examples for that. One of them is water, the common fluid that we all know. And the other example that I am going to show is honey. The density of water 
is 1000 kilograms per meter cube. What this means is that if I take a cube, a cubic or a cube shaped container which had a volume of 1 meter cube and if I were to fill this completely with water, the water in this cube would weigh 1000 kilograms and that is what the density of water represents. Now let's look at the honey. In this case, the density of honey is roughly 1440 kilograms per meter cube. This means that if I were to take an identical cube shaped container and if I were to fill this with honey, the honey in this container or the fluid in this container would weigh 1450 kilograms. Same sized containers but the fluid in here is going to be of different masses. They are going to weigh different and that is because they have different densities. So at this point I'd like to share a very interesting fact. Do you know what the heaviest liquid known to man is? Mercury. Mercury is actually a metal and although metals are typically solids, mercury at room temperature it exists as a liquid. And unlike water, water only weighs 1000 kilograms per meter cube because that's the density of water. Mercury has a density of 13,500 kilograms per meter cube. Gases can have their density specified too. And the same mass per unit of volume concept applies. But the density for gases are smaller numbers. One meter cube of gas, any gas, is obviously not going to weigh 1000 kilograms like water does. Air, for example, the atmospheric air that we have all around us, it has a density of 1.29 kilograms per meter cube. So those were just some liquid and gas examples for us to understand what the actual values of densities look like for real substances. All along in these examples that we have been talking about, densities of these fluids were all constant values, or that's what we thought. 1000 kilograms per meter cube, 1 kilogram per meter cube, etc. But there's a catch here, and a big one. Densities of fluids can change. One cubic meter of water that weighs 1000 kilograms at certain conditions can actually just come down and it can, it can only weigh 800 kilograms. So how is this possible? This is possible with changes in temperature and pressure which has an impact on how the molecules are packed and therefore it can change the densities. Uh, but that whole topic is discussed in detail in a different video and maybe it's the next video. We'll see. But before we end this video, I also wanted to talk about one last thing. And that thing is specific gravity. Specific gravity to me is just a quick way to compare the densities of different substances. And mostly we use it only for liquids. So what it is, is the relative density of one fluid with respect to another. So basically, it is the ratio of density of one substance to the density of another substance. And in case of liquids, we always make the standard comparison with water. So specific gravity, if we were to calculate, let me also bring up the formula. So it is the, it is the ratio of density of any substance or any liquid to the ratio of water. So if we were to calculate the specific gravity of water, that would be 1 divided by 1 or 1000 divided by 1000 in kgs per meter cube, 1000 divided by 1000. This does not have any units because the units would just be cancelled out. And the specific gravity for water would just be 1. 
and a specific gravity of 1 means that the liquid is going to be as heavy as water. Now, let's, let's look at the same honey example. So, we saw that the density of honey was 1450 kilograms per meter cube and we take the ratio of that over the density of water and so for honey the specific gravity would be 1.45 and no units again because they would be cancelled out. So now by looking at these numbers instead of just looking at these big values we see that it's it's very simple and very easy to understand that honey is going to be denser than water. So if we were to take a lighter a liquid that had a lower density then the specific gravity would be much lower and that's why that's why I think specific gravity is important. And we should remember that this always talks about values at atmospheric or standard conditions. So let's not worry about any temperature or pressure changes for now. We will have a look at all of those changes in the next video where I will see you soon. Bye.